Good morning everybody and Happy New Year. Welcome to The Only Way Is Be Sleep. Today it is time to get our brains working. Um, we will be doing some more of the Apollo Academy lessons because we've done these first five as you can see and they're also um, on our YouTube page. Uh, before we do, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Help us get to that thousand subscriber goal for the end of this lovely new year. And just a quick uh, thank you to say thank you to everyone who subscribed over the last couple of days. And uh, to see that popping up, that's been brilliant, the amount of views we've had lately. So thank you guys for watching our videos and subscribing. And keep talking to us. We're always online. We will always chat. So... <clears throat> Let's get started with lesson number six, service propulsion. So the service propulsion system is used to do the large delta V changes when in orbit. So the huge bell-shaped engine on the service module is in the nozzle for this system. So we'll give this a crack and we will do the other videos separately because I don't want to spam people too much with too many videos. So um, there will be more, of course, always will be more videos from re-entry. Brilliant game. If you haven't got it, I'd recommend you download it. It's great fun. Okay, guys, so welcome to the SPS lesson about boob. In today's lesson, we will learn about the SPS. Okay, so I am currently in a stable orbit around Earth, still attached to the SIVB launch vehicle. So it's a Saturn V booster launch vehicle, I'm going to guess. Uh, we will first detach from the booster vehicle and then look at the systems needed to control the SPS. So let's go through the basic flight operations. I recommend checking the flight manual for details. So to separate from the Saturn V booster, all you need to do is press the CSMLV separation button on the MDC-1, which is right here. It's covered in the button, so you'll first need to open that cover and then press the button. So click and click. Okay, so I've done that. If everything went well, you should now be separated from the launch vehicle. So let's have a quick glance outside. And yes, indeed we are. Hey, this has been updated, this has. This is the first time I've actually come on uh, to the Apollo lessons uh, since I last did the video. So that's definitely looking better. don't remember the radios. If that is the radio, I don't remember that being there before. Definitely in much more detail. So anyway, let's get back inside. Okay, so we're now separated. Let's go to the pilot's seat. It's okay, so yeah, I've just seen that, that we've separated. So there are usually more steps, but for this tutorial, it's sufficient. Okay, so go back into the cockpit, which we already have. And we need to look over the different systems that are now needed to operate the SPS. So <clears throat> the SPS consists of a helium pressurization system, a propellant feed system, and a propellant gauging and utilization system, and a rocket engine. So the restartable rocket engine has a nominal thrust of 20,500 pounds and can be gimbaled using the thrust vector controls. So the oxidizer and the fuel in the SPS is used to ignite and generate thrust in the SPS engine. So the total propellant supply is contained within four similar tanks, an oxidizer storage tank, oxidizer sump tank, a uh, fuel storage tank and a fuel sump tank. And it's pressurized with helium at 175 psi to push the substances into the engine and thrust chamber. So when the helium valves can be controlled using the SPS H E L V L A V switches on the MDC3, which is right here, and set the SPS H E L V L V A to off, which is the middle position. There we go. Okay. So the SPS H E V L V talk back indicator show the helium valves are open, grey, and they are. Let's zoom in just a little bit. They are barber poles, so they are closed. Okay. So let's set it to on and notice that the valve is open. There we are, so it's now great so that it's now open. Now set it back to auto. Okay, there we are back on auto. Okay, so the auto will control the valves automatically by the thrust on off logic and it's in the nominal position. So above these controls we will find the pug system. Find that just below the SPS quantity label. So that must be the pug system. That's the quantity label. I'm going to guess that's yeah, right there. Okay. Uh, so the Pugs Propellant Utilization and Gauging subsystem is used to monitor the propellant, and the SPS has a nominal ratio of fuel to oxidizer at a 1 to 1.6 initially. So when both the fuel and the oxidizer levels are the same, the system is balanced. So the oxid unball gauge shows the balance of the system. If it re meets, then it's meant to say reaches zero the system is balanced 
Uh, this is the ratio between oxidization and fuel percentage above. So there we are. Okay, if it's unbalanced, the this gauge will indicate a value of either in the INCR or DECR side, so increase or decrease. Propellant utilisation valves can be used to correct any unbalancing. It will change the mixture ratio to balance the system out. Again, the SPS engine is restartable engine and is the primary source of thrust after the Saturn V booster separation. And there are two pairs of engine injector valves uh, named the by propellant valve system, the AB, and the engine is ignited by opening both or one of these and a shutdown by closing or opening the valves. And when open, the engine will throttle at a max thrust for the duration of the burn. And each engine ignition requires nitrogen from the by propellant valve system to use this start. At the launch pad, it's filled with 2500 psia for each system. <coughs> And this will need to be at least 400 psi for the system in use. In addition, each ignition will require about 50 psi of nitrogen from the bipropellant valve system A and or B. And the SPS instrumentation gauges on the upper part of the MDC3 lets you see the status of the SPS system. So there we go, I believe. Yes, propellant here. Right, okay. Bear with me. There we are. Propellant tank, fuel cells, they are all look good at the moment. Okay, so the NEH2 line can be selected using the SPS. Uh, let me move seats here. No, let's go to the LM pilot. There we are. Okay, so that can be used to select the SPS press indicator switch and can show the temperature, helium, nitrogen levels and the fuel oxidizer levels. Set this to MB2 down. Okay, there we go. Most of the controls to ignite the SPS engine is located on MDC1. Should be over here, MDC1. And most of the controls are over there, okay. Either both A and B SPS injection valve systems need to be armed to ignite the engine. The protected Delta V thrust AB switch is an MDC1 switch is used to arm the control logic for the engine of the injector valves. I had to do a bit of thinking there. I remember recently seeing those Greek letters on TV, so it's a good job I remember. Um, so let's arm the Delta thrust A system now. Where is the switch for that? Is it going to be... Okay, I bet it's over here. It did say MDC1. Yep. It's behind there, isn't it? There we go. Damn it, I didn't want that one. Come on. There we go. Okay, so the... Oh, the LVA, I'm just going to say that the SPS PC gauge shows the chamber pressure and it's indicated switch in the PC, which is usually 100 PSI during the burn. Okay, if the SPS propellant is less than 50%, the fuel might be floating around in the tank due to the free fall of gravity. Okay, therefore, before igniting the engine, the propellant needs to be settled down in the tanks. And this is done using the direct, I want to say, ullage button on the MDC-1 or using the forward translational thrusters. We won't need to do this for now, okay. The engine is ignited in three different ways and being warmed and ready. So the primary method is to use the computer program, the CMC Delta V mode using program 30 and program 40. Okay, <clears throat> the secondary method is to use the SCS and the SCS Delta V mode. The SC continuation switch needs to be in the SCS and the EMS needs to be in Delta V mode. So with the EMS Delta V range set to a number above zero feet a second, when this is set, the thrust on button is pressed to ignite the engine. The third method is to use the SPS thrust direct on mode and is considered as the backup mode. So the SPS thrust switch is set to direct on uh, to ignite the engine and normal to, nominal to shut it down. Okay, so let's try this in the third option now. Set the SPS thrust direct on. Let's ignite the engine and start the burn. Ooh. There we go. Turn this off as soon as possible to shut down the engine again. Okay, let's have a quick glance outside. So we've hardly moved in all honesty. Huh. This has definitely been updated. Look, it's very shiny, I love it. it does look much better. Now I might actually just pop that back on again. Let's do an external view. Uh, you see that's following with us, so we're not actually moving that. <coughs> me. Okay, so that is it for the SPS lesson. So this concludes this lesson, guys. As I said in the beginning of the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Help us get to a thousand subscribers. And take care, guys. We will see you at the next 
re-entry video. Take care.